Hi. Please introduce yourself. Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to Embedded Technology. We are a safe storage solution company to provide a turnkey solution on the software defined storage. And also, we specially choose the on server platform to run the software defined storage with the energy saving uh, purpose. So you like working with the ARM? Yeah, we like the working with the ARM. Our company, uh, from the beginning to right now, we always working with the on server platform. And it says here, data storage for now and future, because it's very crucial yes. that people have so much data, but yeah. they don't know if it's still going to be good 5, 10 years in the future. You need yeah. to have backups mm -hmm. and storage. Do you have a solution for that? Okay, you know, for the recent uh, five years, the data storage demanding is increasing dramatically. And the more and more data need to be stored and never to erase because people or the company or the enterprise, they want to keep everything. To do the further uh, analysis or to do some uh, training purpose, so the data will never be erased. Due to this reason, the capacity, the data capacity requirement become more and more compared to five years ago. So the massive data storage become the trend nowadays. To fix this problem and to fix the uh, cost, uh, you know, the pricing. When you have so many data to store, it will become very expensive for the enterprise. So to find out a more cost efficient solution is the it's a very important topic for the data storage. And due to this reason, the software-defined storage depend, uh, become more and more important for the enterprise, for the data center, and for the ISP, even for some vertical market. So embedded our company, we work out the solution uh, with the open source safe storage. Safe is the most important and the biggest one, the open source uh, software-defined storage in the world. For the past five years, uh, the number one software-defined storage deployment is with Ceph. It supports multiple storage protocol like the block storage, file system, and object storage. So people, the IT user, they could use one equipment to run different uh, data storage protocol. It's very convenient. And uh, you just like play the Lego, you know? You could aggregate more and more equipment, more and more server to become a bigger data pool. And the bigger the capacity it is, the better the performance it is. This is the idea of the set of the software defined storage. But when you have so many servers running the data storage, the power consumption becomes a very critical uh, factor for the data center or for the hyperscale data center. So we want to provide a more green solution, more, um, more better uh, energy saving solution. So that's the reason Embedded today, not today, but from the beginning to today, uh, we choose the on server platform as our server to run the software defined storage. From the example, entry... Here, here's the Ampere. This is the Ampere ATA platform. Uh, for their chipset, they could provide the scale of uh, the processing computing power, but also we choose it due to its energy saving. It could save more than 60 or 50% of the power compared to the general Intel uh, platform. So uh, the same performance, but, but much better in the environment. For running the same set. For running the same set, yeah. So for running the same Storage the same software. management solution. Yeah, everything uh, the same, but save more than uh, 50, 60 percent of the power, power. saving. What so, is, do you do partnership to make this the server? Uh, actually, we have the partnership with Gigabyte Computing for the Ampere server platform because Gigabyte they are the expert for the Ampere platform. So embedded, we are more focusing on the software development and our GUI management for the safe storage. And uh, here we see another Ampere solution. Yeah, it's this is a s smaller one. So uh, actually, um, the chipset, the platform of these two models is the same, um, but with different, uh, with different uh, memory. Because that one, it needs to support 24 slots of the NVMe. So the memory size is much more than the uh, A drive only. 
Yeah, and then this is 64 core version. But MPL Alta platform, you could have 128 core version as well. But let's move for the compute purpose. We are doing the storage, so we don't want, we don't need such big uh, compute power for that. And what I'm looking at here, this is your custom design? Uh, this is our initial design uh, for the safe storage appliance. This is our in-house design. It's not cooperate with other company. So we call it microserver architecture because the safe storage is the distributed storage, you know? So we define, we decide a distributed hardware platform to run the distributed uh, software-defined storage. It leverages Sorry, the battery finished. <laughs> so I see Nuvatan here. What is the other, what are we looking at okay, here? Okay, let me explain the microserver architecture. Uh, we do this to do the decentralized uh, storage server. So in here, you can see eight microserver here. And every microserver is an independent Linux server. They have their own processing power, processing and the uh, onboard memory, onboard fresh for the system disk. So we store the safe storage and our UVS manager, the GUI management. All the software is on each microserver. And what is a CPU? Uh, it's Marvel, Armada. Armada, Armada, Armada. Armada. And then it's here you have Nuvoton doing something Let's different? Let's the BMC. It's for the uh, baseball management. So the data center, they could do the remote access, remote control for each microserver node. And what's on these small ones there? The small one is the M.2 SSD. Uh, we do the cache and the acceleration on the, for the safe software for here. So it's not for the data storage. The data storage will be the drive popular here, but we didn't put any drive here today. So, uh, what is your calculation for this design in terms of power consumption oh, for performance you know, uh, for the application that you Because need? this model uh, is more for the backup and the archiving, so we don't chase in for the super IOPS or super uh, performance, but it's the average performance related to the hard drive. And, but the power consumption is relatively low compared to all the servers in the market. You could imagine in the normal operation, uh, the entire server, if we don't uh, consider the hard drive, the entire server may be just 60 watts to 100 watts in total. 100 watts is the trace uh, workload. So in normal daily operation, maybe just 50 to 60 watts. And uh, this one, it could support the safe storage for the, uh, you know, data backup, data archiving, and also for the multimedia uh, file as well. So, are you saying that for the same basic backup solution? Yes. This could use half the power of other solution? Less than half power. Less than half power? Yeah, I think it could uh, save about 70% uh, power compared to the general server in the market. 70% power save. Yeah, 70% power saving. Because you know, for the large scale data center, it's not only the the power to run the system, but also the, the power to cooling down the system. So it's the double side effect for that. Is there, uh, I always want to back up 40 terabytes. 40 terabytes. Uh, all my videos, uh -huh. I need to back up. And I have so many challenges because Google tell me now I have to move everything. Okay. Because uh, uh, they don't want to provide unlimited anymore. Oh, I see. You need to pay the monthly charge for that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when I buy external hard disk, uh -huh. I just buy 14 terabyte for $200. Okay. And it's very cheap to buy external hard disk. Yes. But I want this to be on the cloud uh -huh. at the same price what I pay for in the store, you know? Uh -huh. So I just need my storage to be mostly powered off, mostly offline somehow, mm -hmm. and only turn on 0.1% of the time when I need it, you know? Uh -huh. Does it make any sense what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, let me say so. Uh, when you want to store your massive data, you could choose the public cloud, like the Google, like the Amazon, or like the uh, Microsoft Azure. You could choose any of these public cloud. The entry level is quite, simple and uh, you know it doesn't cost you a lot but for the enterprise who want to do this massive backup with Google Cloud or with AWS 
it costs less a lot because the pricing strategy is different. So uh, nowadays, a lot of company, they also do the private cloud in inside layer data center, layer data center room in the company, right? But they also want to use the same protocol, uh, the object storage as well. From this point of view, Ceph is very interesting because Ceph, it could support multiple protocol, including the object storage, which is S3 compatible. That means it's compatible with the AWS S3. So you could have the on-premise equipment, like our equipment, in your data center room, inside your company. And you could scale out the capacity as you need. You just need to connect to the same uh, IP range and the same uh, switch, power of the rig switch. Then you could have the on-premise private cloud in your enterprise or at your home. Because you are a YouTuber, you have massive data. So maybe your home, you need already 40 terabyte, 100 terabyte, right? But you could access this data just like you access to the cloud because it's the object storage. Yeah. So, but what I'm trying to understand is, um, you know, those hard disks. Yes. To have them use the minimum amount of power, the best way is to turn them off. Oh, and you mean to turn them on when you need it? Does uh, that make any sense? That makes sense, but our, you know, because our target customer is not the end user who do lightweight, it's more for the data center, so they are 24 hours running. Access. They are almost all the time running, so of course, uh, to turn it off when you don't do have any workload, uh, is a power saving mode. But uh, since our target customer, they don't do that quite frequently. So we didn't do that, but it's doable. It's doable with the, with the same hard disk and with the same boards as just software solution? Yeah, I think it's doable. Technically, it's doable. Just need to do some uh, extra effort for light. And then also, I guess, on my 14 terabyte external Seagate is a I think it's called SMG. What's it called? Uh, the uh, shingle metallic, the shingle hard disk, the one that's the cheapest one, you know? Uh, but, but we don't use the so cheapest one. We are using the enterprise grade. It's the ASOS. Yeah, it's EXOA series. It's their data center grade. So the cheapest level of uh, Bansike, sorry, I don't know that. Since our target uh, application is more for the data center or enterprise. Yeah. Maybe maybe the best solution is to have a mix. Uh, you can have some that are high grade and some that are the cheapest one to have the cold storage. But I guess cold storage, people put that on uh, tapes uh, or what? For the cold storage, extremely cold storage, you still have the tape to do that. And uh, for, I should say, it's possible for everything, just depending on the application and the your target market. And for Embedded today, since we, our customer, they don't do lightweight, so our product, we don't do, you know, turn off the power uh, during the rest. Yeah, but right. it's doable, technically. So, is this solution right here, the lowest cost storage solution in the world? Because uh, of less power you know, consumption. It's hard to say, but it must be very uh, aggressive and a very competitive pricing to the uh, to the customer, to the end user. Yeah. But again, we are enterprise uh, product, so the enterprise product doesn't mean the cheapest one for the end, for the consumer. Yeah, it's different. The consumer and the enterprise is two different segment market. Yeah. yeah. So I will not say we are the cheapest, but I will say we are offering a very high quality, high availability, and a good software-defined solution with reasonable, reasonable pricing, affordable pricing. I should say so. But of course, I cannot imagine the hard, hardware has to be so cheap, but more like the power consumption in the long term. That's huh? where people save the money. Uh, because less power consumption. You said 70% less. Yeah, so in terms of the power charge, uh, for their electricity fee must be the cheapest one. All right. Uh, this custom solution you announced already how long time ago? Oh, actually, we announced this architecture since 2016. So it's about six, 
to seven years ago, but we have different model generation up to today. So, are people buying this design or mostly the Gigabyte uh, you know, solution? For the previous time, we are we are promoting the micro so, uh, micro server design, uh, but the Gigabyte uh, this centralized server we just adapt it since last year because we find right now with the media pricing, I mean the NVMe price or SSD price, it dropped down very quickly, right? So more and more customer data center and the enterprise, they are able to afford the fresh storage. But to run the fresh, the microserver architecture is not so suitable because the fresh is better to have the large bandwidth and the higher computing resource and the higher memory resource. So that's the, that's the reason why we also have this segment product with the Gigabyte. So it's two different market, two different requirements. We offer different solution based on, you, you know, it's kind of the Tyler Tyler made to so the market. So the best market. solution here is hard disk? It's hard one. disk. For hard disk, hard drive. And your customer usually would get how many terabytes on each? 20? Uh, 20. Today, 20. So that's... We're starting from maybe 4 terabytes, 6 terabytes with the year, 8 terabytes. And right now, most of customers, they choose 18, 16, 18, and 20 terabytes. So you, when you put a 20, it's 160 yeah. terabyte in one one of these yeah one of these but you could imagine for the NVMe if you choose the micron data center level NVMe they have 30 terabyte NVMe it's bigger size than the hard drive that the pricing is about uh, let me think about the price is about 13 tons per disk 13 times more. yeah yeah because if you compare the 30 terabyte NVMe price. I mean, if you buy with them, not with us, okay? The market price. And the 20 terabyte hard drive, it probably have 10 times to 13 times the price gap from two different media. For the same storage amount? Yeah. Or for, you know? So, yeah. so it's do you a think choice. in the future, the NVMe, the flash, you will think in the future the same, will be cheaper same. than the hard disk or never? Uh, you know, if it's cheaper, that's the cross of the desk, right? So that's the worry the, the disk company or the fresh company, they should worry. Yeah, but it's all good for the end user. For you, it's all good no matter what. Yeah, I just it's wonder, all good. I just wonder if at some point they will find a way with the 3D NAND or something yeah, to make you know, it cheaper than hard disk. You know, when the hard drive and the flash and the NVMe, if they cross the line, cross the pricing point, I think the new technology will come out as well. Yeah. Uh, so are you very famous? People use your technology all over the world? Hmm? People use your technology around the world? Yeah, we have the partner uh, in South of Asia, in Europe, and uh, in Taiwan. So we try to establish the regional partner to promoting our product. Because our product is uh, ready to use software defined storage. So to leverage the partnership uh, in each country and the region, we could promote our concept and the product to the world. And we are doing this. We will keep doing that. And Marvel has a long history of doing kind of like controllers for the hard disk. Yes, and Mario, like that, they are right? also, you know, a lot of the NAS system, the NAS devices, they are using the Marvel chip as well. So they have very long-term um, working, on, working on, the, on this domain already. But we use the same chip, say, to work out the server product for that. So this is quite innovative product during the uh, 2016, during the year, yeah. And is there any talk of radically changing this design? You have future ideas and stuff? You know, that's really depending on the market demand because right now we, we observe more and more demand on the fresh, less and less demand on the hard drive from our customer side. That's the reason why we move forward to the fresh, to the NVMe. So I don't know when the demand from the MV, for the NVMe safe storage or the demand for the hard drive sto safe storage will come to a you know crossing point. So the market demand will also make our decision differently. How is your uh, business model? 
you our, sell service. You, you sell the. Our the business software. model is uh, we sell the tanking solution to the partner, and then they do the local support, and they resell to uh, their uh, customer. So most of the time, it's the tanky solution. But for some direct customer or uh, you know different business commitment project, we do the software only support as well. Hello, I'm Mr. Beast. No, I'm not Mr. Beast actually. But if I was Mr. Beast and if I was sending you a bunch of money, I would use Wise. Wise is a really smart way to send money around the world. Tiny little fees. Check out my video, a seven minute video where I try to explain some more. It works in hundreds of countries. Every time you go to a different country, use your Wise card or use your Android Pay, your, your uh, Apple Pay to do all your payments with a tiny little conversion pay. Uh, fee. If you have some customers in different countries, they can send you money to local bank accounts in the US and Europe, all over the world. You can get local bank account details. They transfer tiny little fees. Don't use PayPal anymore. Don't use Western Union. Uh, don't use your bank to send money because it's surprising, but you wouldn't know maybe, but they take fees that are gigantic, that are pretty big. Just use the wise. It's smart.